Hi, this is Manuel, Delta Lima 2, Mike Alpha November. There hasn't been a video in a while and the reason for that is I simply have a life to live right now. Uh, some people know it maybe, some don't. Uh, I am a hunter. I recently uh, got a new hunting area and yeah, at this moment uh, there's a lot of my free time going to that hunting area, basically living the real life. Okay, this is the first video of a series of videos where I'm going to show you how to repair TrueSDX. I'm going to show you some very common errors, some very common failures that I can read often about and how to fix them. I had some friends send some TrueSDXs uh, to me that had certain defects and I offered to fix that and that has been some months ago now and people started carefully asking hey I need my true SDX back so I figured it's time to do it. I initially wanted to do that to do all repairs in one video then I figured hey uh, maybe that's not too good for attention uh, and if you want to search it later um, it's better to have the, the error uh, description in the video title so I decided to make a series out of it and by the way I didn't make all repairs in one evening. Let's start with my workbench and what I have there and maybe if we need it or not. So let's talk about the equipment I'm using for troubleshooting. Uh, I think the most important thing recently uh, is uh, lab power supply. Uh, you can limit the current. So in case something is drawing uh, current really bad, this is cutting it off, uh, so nothing worse is happening. Uh, let's imagine there's a short circuit and you're not risking anything else to burn down. So you can react immediately and uh, disconnect it from the power source. Uh, by the, this is disconnecting it from the power source. If you don't have it, I mean, it's it's only like 80 bucks or something like that, but if you don't need it very often, uh, it, no problem, you can always use a uh, USB power supply. You can use a power bank. Um, I've connected the TrueSDX here. This is a perfectly working TrueSDX and you can see here I have no dummy load. It's on transmit uh, and you cannot really destroy the BS170s uh, when only working on USB power supply. So this would be your plan B, an expedient solution in case you don't have a lab power supply. Another important tool is a DMM in case of troubleshooting. Uh, most important thing is obviously a good soldering iron. Um, this is my Weller soldering station. Um, I have different tips for that. It's a, a small pencil sized um, soldering iron with enough power. I think this is 80 watts. That's enough. That's a, a, a brand name, Weller. I don't know if they are a big thing in US and the rest of the world. In Germany, it's the big, the biggest brand. <clears throat> uh, I mean, these days there's uh, good stuff available from China that, that does the job. However, I decided I wanted to have something really good, so I bought it. Um, the next thing is a dummy load. I mean, I'm using always this dummy load from QRP Labs. It's a kit you can buy for like, I think $8 and this is worth its money. Um, I have connected my my uh, oscilloscope probe to it and if I transmit into that, I can see the wave in my oscilloscope. Oscilloscope would be another thing that's a nice to have, not a must have, but I'm, I'm using that as power measurement tool. Uh, it's the most accurate thing I could find so far and since I have it, I'm using it. Uh, nice to have because you can see uh, or visualize waveforms. So, yeah. Okay, so now let's go a little bit back to some more basic tools. I have here a pair of tweezers, I guess. Um, by the way, this was, uh, <laughs> was a gift from Faraz. Faraz, my brother, I miss you. Um, hope we get in touch soon again. Um, some side cutters, but those are the, the small ones for electronic cutting. I bought like a box of 10 of those. They are really cheap, but they are essential. Something I really like is this 
um, tool to uninsulate wires. Suction pump, cheap, to unsolder. Um, then there is then there is unsoldering wick that might come in handy. Tools I I might use. I'm not sure if they are needed in the series. We will see. It's a tiny SA, 50 bucks back then when I bought it. Um, Nano VNA. I have a bigger one with a bigger screen. That's a more uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to say heavy duty, but it's more, um, the, it uses more quality components and it's really good compared to the real cheap ones. However, the real cheap ones are perfectly great for the job we are doing here. Uh, this is a multifunction tester. You will see that in that series. Uh, this one can test components like can measure resistance, capacitance, and stuff like that, but I'm using it mainly to sort, to pre-select, um, FETs to pre-select the transistors we are using in the PA. That's the whole reason I bought this, really cheap. Some things I might use are attenuators that can be adjusted. This is, uh, comes in handy when I want to measure receiver sensitivity. And last but not least, this is a hot air soldering station. Basically, this is blowing hot air out here when it runs and you can you can apply heat to a more to a bigger surface uh, especially when you have parts with uh, plenty of legs uh, this comes in really handy also not expensive i think i didn't pay much more than 50 or 80 bucks for that um, but it did the job when i needed it and last but not least the most essential tool of them all a good beer because have you ever heard a story that started with the words, hey, remember when we had that salad together? Just kidding, kids don't drink alcohol. Okay, so what we have here is a TrueSDX that was supposed to have problems with SWR measurement, but if you look at that, yeah, see, it draws current, but at the same time, there's absolutely no output power. <clears throat> well, the SWR thing would be easy to figure. Just looking at the transformer. Yeah, it's crossing over and going to a different direction compared that's the problem. That's one of the problems. I'm going to fix that and then I'm going to check if output power is there or if there's another issue. I think it's also important to show you how you unsolder these uh, toroids uh, because at least two are on ground and are really hard to unsolder. So the universal trick is cut them and then simply unsolder leg by leg. it's clean but <clears throat> when I see solder joints like this one see this it's not looking too good it, it looks like it it's gluing on there so I'm going to resolder the SMA socket before I uh, rewind the toroid Okay, maybe I never explained this before, but I'm going now. I'm a right-handed guy, so I'm holding always the toroid with my left hand and winding with my right hand. And this way, I ended up with a pattern 
that is behind the toroid left and in front of the toroid on the right side. And if you stick that through here, that's the way it's supposed to go in and will be soldered. And then, uh, by the way, also the arrows here show that pattern. Um, and then there will be a single, single one through the center. I'm going to do that now, I'm going to solder that and we'll be back to check if it resolved the issue. By the way, don't forget to scratch the ends of your uh, copper animal wire. That's one of the most errors why there is no uh, output power. Cold solder joints because of the lack, the animal coating that's on the wires so you don't have a good contact. So what I'm doing is always scratching the ends with a knife. Now let's have another look. This is how it looks. We have the one that goes through the center and the other one goes around. Um, before that it was crossed. Now both go in the same direction and we should have SWR measurement and if Everything went right. We should also have now output power. And bingo. It draws current. We have output power. And it's showing SWR. Bingo. Perfect. That was an easy fix. Okay, that was the first video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Hope I made myself somehow clear. Um, if you don't want to miss content like this, please subscribe to the channel and leave a like. Thanks. Bye-bye.